most fortunate man in the world. Now, I was a very fortunate fellow, actually. I came from humble beginnings. Uh, my father's mother died when he was five months old. Father died when he was five years. Raised 10 of us, gave us the world. Go out there and get it. I did a number of other things. I was a bulldozer operator. I drove a truck. I was a waiter. I was a bartender. And of course, in 1968, I became a member of parliament. I was a member of parliament for uh, 33 years. And during that period, I was the minister for tourism for 10, 14 years, minister for labor and immigration, seven years, minister for works and engineering, uh, three years and the deputy premier for four years. So I've had a very exciting and illustrious career. Love every bit of it. You know, I've said many times that anyone that didn't grow up with the benefit of a big family missed the joy of living. And, and, and you know, my father was an unbelievable man. Uh, we, he used to tell we guys, I mean, you want to get out and play cricket in the evening. If you're not here by 6.30, you won't eat. Literally, he didn't mean it, but what he did insist that we all sit down at the table because that's where he had his form. And it wasn't uncommon. 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, we're still sitting there. And meanwhile, if some music came on the radio, he was the first up to dance with one of my sisters. Yeah, he, he was a marvelous man. I do, I grew up with it. And uh, during the period, uh, it wasn't forced upon me. It's just that I admire all the great qualities, the quality of service, the, the dress. The, I mean, I, I, I don't have on my shorts today. This what we inherited from them, which was, was our standard dress, our, our long Bermuda socks and shorts. And we adopted that from the regiment and from the Navy when they came here. There are some very uh, noble, uh, uh, you might say habits and what have you that we adopted from him and, and I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, discipline is a thing you start the day you're born and stop the day you die and, 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 and we grew up under that type of thing. Uh, tourism was our main source of revenue. So everybody who came here was a potential visitor. You know, I mean, I, the, the years I was there in 1980 was my best year ever. Uh, the, uh, for the island, and there is uh, 650,000 visitors came. What did that give to us? Gave us one of the highest standards of living in the world, one of the highest per capita incomes in the world. And, 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 and when you consider that we, we don't have sufficient soil to feed ourselves for, for three months, it says volumes. It says volume. <laughs> I, I have photographs of uh, me uh, uh, with her. I met her several times. And I went to Buckingham Palace uh, five years ago where I received my CBE. I'm a commander of the Mazaxon Order of the British Empire yeah, for my services to tourism and to the country in general, I guess. But, uh, and when I went to Buckingham Palace, uh, I took my three granddaughters. I took them because uh, I wanted them growing up knowing uh, what the British uh, uh, government and what the British, the, the, the Commonwealth stood for. And I'll tell you, if you ever get the opportunity, uh, when they knight you, don't let them send it by a bus boy, but go to Buckingham Palace itself, because it's the most fabulous experience that you'd want, ever want to meet. Well, that title was given to me some years ago by a Royal Gazette reporter. Well, this is my 45th uh, year of broadcasting cricket to the people of the island. Uh, I have enjoyed every bit of it. And you know, interesting enough, but during that period, when I first became uh, a member of the cabinet, it was one of the cabinet ministers said to me, now that you're a minister in the government, I hope you're not going to be doing those ridiculous uh, cricket uh, commentaries and I said well I beg to differ 
I said, I believe that there are a lot of seniors out there who have helped to give us the good life through their contribution and sacrifice, and they deserve to have this brought into their homes, the sick and the shut in in the hospitals, and, uh, but your point is well taken. And I had the benefit of talking with my good friend, Lord Montemere, who was a, a, a great governor and a wonderful man, and he was a keen sportsman. And I said, Lord Montemere, you, on, on the advice of the Premier, appointed me to my high office, and I wouldn't want to do anything to detract from it. But uh, I've been told that uh, I should not be continuing with my cricket commentaries. He said, Jim, had you not started, it would be a mistake to start. But the fact that you do it, it would be a mistake to stop. I, and who would I jolly well listen to?